Well, good morning, everybody. This is Tim Green with Rattle Magazine. Welcome to Poet Respond Live, the only Sunday morning news show where we talk about current events through the lens and magic of poetry. Um, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, this is mostly an open mic show, so uh, you should know that if you'd like to call in and share a poem that you've written about something that's going on right now, it's a, it's a poems about current events is what we're doing here. Um, all you have to do is you can email it to um, open mic at rattle.com um, and um, then I can show it on screen as you read then you call into our phone number which is 818-850-7727 let it ring a few times and I will um, have you on the call list it shows up on my call screen if you call and let it ring a few times uh, you can also send me a chat message over Skype which is preferred it's really nice to be able to see you as well as uh, hear you read your poem so um, all you have to do is uh, send a chat message to Rattle Poetry. I might not be able to reply, but I probably will um, on the chat window, and then I will call you when the time is right. Um, now, we have some excellent poems uh, published this week. Uh, we picked two for Poet Response. We're going to start out by talking to those two poets, like we always do. And um, let me give a call to... Um, Today's poem, poet is Stephen Gibson. It's a Memorial Day poem. We're going to give him a call right now. Uh, here he comes. Hey, Stephen, this is Tim with Rattle. Let me pull you into the uh, stream, and then you're going to be live on Poet Respond Live. Great. That's terrific. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> yeah, my pleasure. So, so uh, thanks so much for, for joining us and for writing that poem today, uh, Stephen. I'm going to put it on screen so everybody can see. It's a crown for my father on Memorial Day. Um, is there anything you want to want to say about, about, about the poem and, and what, um, you know, when did you start writing it? It's a long, it's a long poem. Um, is it a poem that you sort of have been working on for a long time or was it all really written this week? It, it, it's something that I've been working on uh, each Memorial Day. Uh, I, I end up going back to uh, my father's service. Mm -hmm. And in the past, I've written uh, uh, about that. Um, and uh, it's a poem I've worked on. Uh, the Sonnet Crown uh, is something I've been working on for a while. I wanted to expand more. Uh, and, and at the same time, uh, you know, keep going back to certain certain themes that I wanted to make sure I could uh, connect with. Uh, so it's something that I've been in you know, every time Memorial Day comes around. I'm I'm uh, I'm gravitating toward toward going back to the subject of my my father, his service, and uh, and the damage that war does. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, and uh, the sonnet form, uh, you know, it's a it's a variation on it. It's not a a, a literal crown, um, but but the sonnet allows you to do that. Uh, it allows you to stay uh, on a particular idea, and then also to to expand the idea. And of course, uh, the linked sonnet, you know, allows you to keep you know coming back. Uh, you know, I, I think that's that's really. Uh, uh, every 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 anniversary, mm -hmm. um, you know, my mind goes back to it, gravitates uh, uh, toward that. Also, the fact of the matter is that my wife's father is uh, is a veteran of the war too, and ironically, he was born the day after the armistice, hmm. and he served in World War II. And that was, you know, the armistice was, you know, you know, intended to end all wars, and we know how that turned out. Yeah. So yeah. so so it comes back. There's. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's something that uh, I pay attention to, and I know everybody else, you know, uh, pays attention to, and they all have their own, you know, personal stories. Yeah, well, I, I usually say on these, but it's just the truth. As I'm reading submissions, all I'm doing really is listening to my own almost body for some kind of physiological response. Like, you know, a great poem gives you goosebumps or something. And that's what this poem did, is I was um, sitting down reading submissions yesterday. Um um, and it's just so it's so honest too, um, and that's what I really loved about it is that the the, the truth of it just speaks I think um, and speaks to you know because um, 
you know, so many of us have have family members that were were in the military, and um, even for those who survive, it takes its toll um, in a very noticeable way, which is what the poem shows really well. Uh, you know, uh, there 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 were so many things, uh, you know, that I didn't know. Uh, fortunately, uh, before my mother passed away, she was able to come down, and uh, and we talked about things that you know are difficult to talk about, and. Uh, and uh, you know she, you know she filled me in. She filled me in, and she wanted me to, to know the, you know the unvarnished mm-hmm. truth. He was a good man. He was a good man, and he, uh, and he went to war. Mm-hmm. And uh, and sometimes people people come back damaged in, in different ways. And uh, uh, but like a little uh, one little thing I didn't know I, I, until we talked was that, you know he was he was. Uh, City College of New York to, to get his uh, uh, CPA, mm-hmm. and uh, and then you know then uh, Pearl Harbor happened and and everything changed. Uh, so uh, no, thank you. I I I I, I figured if I'm going to write it, uh, I better uh, tell what truth I know. Yeah, well, it really worked. Thanks so much for sharing that, Stephen. It's a longer poem. Normally, I'd ask if you wanted to read it, um, and you, you can if you want, or I could just play it for everybody, um, the recording you already made. Would you rather, which would you rather do? You know, I think I'd love to read it live. Yeah, uh, okay, please, that would be okay, please do, yeah. Right? Yeah, definitely. I just, yeah. uh, given the length, yeah. I wasn't sure you'd want to, but uh, but that's definitely great. Yeah, so I'll show it and then and go ahead. Uh, a Crown for My Father on Memorial Day. One. I have often told stories about you. As a kid, I promised not to forget. Like the photo I kept in my wallet when you were in boot camp in World War II, posing outside your tent. Everyone knew the future would happen, but didn't let themselves think too much, only to regret what was in the past they could not undo. I'd look at that photo and promise you thoughts of the Bronx River housing project with you home like that pick in my wallet, would remain with me forever. Who knew? That photo, which had serrated edges, was lost long ago. So much for pledges. Two, lost long ago, so much for the pledges to a dead father in a photograph who stands outside a tent and almost laughs. The smile is hard around the edges, and the photo in memory dredges up memories after the photograph. An adult, I want to cut time in half and remember only a boy's pledges. But how can you forget what you still know? Cut time in half and remember before, but not ever what will happen later. It's not like tearing in half a photo and pretending you didn't go to war or what you did later to my mother. Three, and what you did later to my mother, a child should never see. Court photos document the violence blow by blow to justify each restraining order, which you would comply with and then ignore. It must have been I didn't want to know and turned my mind off as two shadows entered the bedroom and closed the door. The cops would come as they had come before and ask your wife if she wanted to go with them to the hospital, and she'd say no. When the door opened, there'd be the neighbors. This was in the Bronx River Housing Project, Images not in the photo in my wallet. Four. Images not in the photo in my wallet. Nor the image of you in your boxer shorts. Cops helping you with your pants. Their reports included the weapons, German war helmet, Nazi flag. And the letters you would let the cops pretend to read, pretend to sort, then return to the shoe boxes. You were caught trying to make sense of what you couldn't forget. Hence, the war trophies on the bed and letters. And you going over each one again and again and never recalling what you'd done to her after you promised it would never happen, after what you had experienced in war. Your gravestone marker reads, Tank Destroyer. Five. Your gravestone marker reads, Tank Destroyer. I took my wife and kids there on vacation. At Bay Pines, they gave me a map of the section and circled in blue your row with the number. I went there because I had promised her. I have a wife, a daughter, and a son. The visit was a side trip on the vacation. By chance, in another section was a bagpiper. 
I took a photograph of your grave marker. It gives your name, rank, and division. You passed away when you were 37. The war over, but a casualty of the war. And as a casualty, I include my mother after convulsive shock and pneumonia. Six, after convulsive shock and pneumonia, you died, buried in Bay Pines in Florida. I went to visit as I promised her before your wife died of liver cancer. I have the map with section row number circled in blue ink I keep in a drawer with batteries, flashlight, if we lose power in the next hurricane. I live in Florida, I'm retired. I was a college professor. My wife of 50 years, also a teacher, retired, plans trips to our son and daughter and daughter's boyfriend in Seattle each summer. I don't live in the Bronx River Housing Project. I don't have that photo of you in my wallet. Seven, I don't have that photo of you in my wallet because I lost it a long time ago. But I do have the cemetery photo. It's on my bookcase. I don't want to forget that at City College, you wanted to get your CPA. The war came. You had to go. That's you outside that tent in the photo. And the future hasn't happened. Not yet. And nothing is lost. The photo, the wallet, the you almost smiling because you know that's how she needs to see you as you go off into a future neither of you could expect. The past is past. What's done, we can't undo. I have often told stories about you. Thanks so much. That was Stephen Gibson reading his poem from, uh, from today, uh, A Crown for My Father on Memorial Day. Um, thanks so much for sharing and, and calling in, Stephen. It was really great to talk to you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. And congratulations to my, to my uh, daughter and her new husband, Chris. Uh, uh, and and it, that, it was yesterday. The wedding was yesterday. It was on Zoom, and it was, it was, it was terrific. Yeah, you mentioned that in the email. And, uh, yeah, yeah, congratulations yeah. to your daughter. Um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, um, unfortunately, you couldn't make it yourself because of the, the situation we're all in. But I'm so glad you got to at least yeah. watch on Zoom and be there yeah. that way. Uh, Kyla and Christopher. It was wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you, Steve. Well, thank you, Tim. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my pleasure. Have a good thank day. You. Bye. You too. Bye bye. So it was our um, a Memorial Day poem. Um, so let's see. Um, and now we're going to do something a little different. We've never done this before, but um, we'll see how it goes. We're going to talk to. Tuesday's poet. So this is going to be a surprise preview of the poem that's going to be coming up on Tuesday because I chose two poems this week. And um, let's call her up. This is um, Tishani Doshi. Uh, let me find her on the call list. Here we go. Tishani. Hi. Hey, thanks so much for joining us. Let me pull you in so everybody can see you. Um, hmm. Let's see. You're not showing. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. You're not showing up, though, but I'm not sure why. We can hear you, though. Um, hmm. Oh, oh you're like over here. I see. <laughs> Sorry. One second. Okay. I gotta grab the video. There's the video. It was just you were hidden behind me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hi. So hi. So um yeah, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Um and you're in um Abu Dhabi, is that where you said you were? Yeah, yeah. Um I teach at NYU here, so I've just finished and hanging around waiting. Mm hmm And how are things how are things where you are given the pandemic and all that? Um, no, they've been quite vigilant here. So we've been since the end of February, quite aware of the situation. And um, the students and staff have mainly stayed on campus. They haven't sent anyone home. So we've all been looked after and it's been quite organized. Um, so yeah, it's been okay. But you know, mm -hmm. the, the sense of, I suppose, uh, isolation and the sense of not an uncertainty is something that everybody's going through and, and we feel that here too. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, your poem was about something several people wrote about, uh, but the poem was just so just beautifully written. And um, like the poem, we published a poem of yours about six or seven weeks ago, too. A very similar, similarly um, beautiful style of writing. And um, I just couldn't pass it up again. Um, but it's about it's just a tragic event that happened um, in Afghanistan. Do you, want to, do you want to talk a little bit about, about what you were writing about? Sure. Um, yeah, this was sort of in response to the shooting in a maternity clinic in Kabul at the MSF, the Médecins Sans, Sans Frontiers uh, Clinic. And um, I'd worked with MSF many years ago. I'd uh, done a project in India and Nagaland about um, healthcare. And um, I have friends who work with them. And, and somehow the story... I mean, I think we're all following the news quite obsessively. Um, but this just just tore me up in a way that I, I couldn't make sense of it. And I was struggling to, to I think when you're writing uh, to news, you, you have a certain sense of rage or anger or confusion. And then with the poem, the, the difficulty is what do you do with that, you know? And so I wrote many, many versions of this poem before I, I guess I found the voice for it or the container for it, which could have... I think that sense of beauty that you're talking about, mm -hmm. um, even though it's such a difficult subject, I mean, the idea that you would go into a clinic and shoot pregnant mothers is horrific. Yeah, it's a pretty much the most horrific thing I can imagine. I mean, I, it's hard to, you know, to think of something that would be worse than that. Um, just so heartbreaking to see that story. And, um, and we did receive maybe a, a dozen poems about it. Um, but I thought this one just captured it. So so well and so memorably. Um, do you want to read it? Sure. Okay. After a shooting in a maternity clinic in Kabul, no one forgets there is a war going on, but there are moments you could be forgiven for believing the city is still an orchard, a place where you could make a thing grow. There is always a pile of rubble from which some desperate person struggles to rise, while another person wraps a shawl around their shoulders and roasts marshmallows over a fire. This is not that. This is not bomb dropping from sky, human shield, hostages in a stream, child picking up toy that explodes in her hands, although there's always that. Hope is a booby trap. This is the house you were brought to after crossing a river, leaving the mountains and burnt fields behind a place of safety where you could be alone with your own startling power. Not why were you out and why wasn't your face covered and who told you to climb into that rickshaw, but here, prepare for this most ordinary thing, a birth. And this is not to ask what it means to never see someone again, but to ask what it means not to make it past the first checkpoint of your mother's gates. Never mind all the wild places outside, the mud brick villages, the valleys and harvests and glasses of green tea, or even to say, I am here to claim the child of Suraya, because you know this to be impossible. Even if you could bring a man to recover your sister's corpse and the newborn, where do you go from here? You still have to consider the bodies, the bullet-ridden walls still have to climb up to the small window of this house and take in the panorama. See, it is raining outside and men weep for their wives and perhaps the entire world is an orchard that has detonated its crimson fruits, its pomegranates and poppies and tart mulberries to wash these floors red. And those of us who stand outside this house know that nothing will flourish here again. Like crowds who gather for an execution, we can only ask, what does it mean to be born in a graveyard, to enter the world saying, O oh thief, O oh life. Thank you, thanks so much. I didn't have my mic on, sorry. Yeah, so um, <laughs> what I said earlier um, to Tishani is that um, you know, the the one poem, you know, Stephen's poem gave me goosebumps, and this one 
made me tear up reading it. Um, it was such a, a touching poem, and um, just the the pain and suffering of the world just comes through so clearly and um, memorably in that poem. So thanks so much for her for sharing that. That's going to be the the featured poem Tuesday, May twenty sixth, and um, you get a preview of it here on the uh, um, Poets Respond Live. So thanks so much for joining us um, and doing that. Now um, we're going to go to the open mic and um, or the open lines or whatever you want to call it. Um, once again, the phone number is um, 818-850-7727. If you'd like to call in to share a poem, you can also send a chat message to Rattle Poetry if you'd like to do it over a video, which is always uh, preferred, um, but, but the phone's fine too. And um, we have a whole bunch of people lined up. Um, let's see, we have... So I think we're going to go to Jennifer John, um, who we know pretty well here. We interviewed her in uh, Rattle number, uh, I don't know what, 43, 53 maybe. Um, Neil Lemery, Amit Saha, Vidya Venkat, Pranab Gosh, um, Richard Westheimer, Harpreet Kathuria. And then we have some phone numbers too, a 561 number. Um, oh, Megan Wildhood. So we have a lot of people that are ready to go. Let's get into it and, and not... Um, and not spend a lot of time me me rambling on. I'm not a morning person, <laughs> and I haven't drinking my coffee yet. So um, let's do Jennifer. Let's call up Jennifer. Um, if I can find her. Oh yeah, I, I liked. Yeah, I love Jennifer's poem. So you're in it for a treat right now. Hey Jennifer. Hi. How are you doing today? Um, oh, there you are. I see you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> hey, it just took a little second for me to pop in. But yeah, so great to see you. I haven't seen you since the, I think since the AWP probably when, um, yeah. in LA, whenever, whatever year that was. Um, oh my God, forever ago when we could travel. I know. <laughs> yeah. Those days, I, hopefully they're not long gone, but maybe, maybe they are. I don't know. So how, how are you uh, and your family holding up? We're actually doing great. I mean, a lot of people, I don't know, I feel fortunate. We're not like fabulously rich, but somehow we're thriving. We're healthy. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I, I usually feel, I mean, I have my dips, you know, life roller coaster, but actually pretty good, actually. Yeah, that's... How about you? Yeah, you guys? the same here. I mean, we have just, we live in a beautiful place. Uh, we work from home already, so it wasn't a big transition to work from home. Yeah. And um, we just feel really fortunate. And and the uh, the pandemic hasn't really hit where we are either. It's a small town. Um, maybe the, we were bombarded by UV because we we're over a mile high. So maybe that has something to do with it too. I don't know, but but it, yeah. there hasn't been much of it here. And um, and we kind of, I mean, the kids are home. I know you have your. I can't remember how old your kids are, but you have kids similar. Older. Like, are they older? No, they're t they're teenagers. teenagers. I think when now. I met you, they were pretty young. Yeah. But, okay. Um, yeah. Everybody's. Yeah. You're, time stops a little bit but how are they yeah. you know I, I i keep thinking though like it's hard enough for them mine are nine and five but uh oh. for for teenagers um it must be really yeah. hard not to you know, not to sneak out and <laughs> you it, know well, all that no, stuff. i mean they behave but my son suffered he's an extrovert and uh -huh. he just like embraced zoom he can train any professional on zoom oh, wow. he does <laughs> like all day long he has calls so he uh -huh. can reach out and then he went back to work he works at chick-fil-a so mm -hmm. he went back mostly just to be around people yeah yeah so but they they don't sneak i mean they're very good kids yeah <laughs> oh, and my yeah, daughter I'm, we I'm send sure. them out we don't have nature like you guys have uh -huh. i've seen your pictures on mm -hmm. facebook <laughs> we do send them out once a day like for a couple hours just uh -huh. so that they're outdoors yeah i think um, it's really important to for, for a lot of reasons oops we lost your video um are you there still oh i am still here i feel froze oh, oh you're uh, back okay um, well, the poem you, you wrote this week, which it was, um, it was one, I, you know, I, there's just limited space. And, and this is why I wanted to have this poet respond live, because I had those two poems I really wanted to publish. Um, and then yours was like the third one that I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that just happens every week. There's always a bunch of poems that I wish we could publish. And, um, and so, and I love this because it was not about the coronavirus. And, um, and about it was about science, which I love science. Do you want to talk a little bit about what what the poem was about? Yes. Um, so I'm a huge sci-fi fan, like 
I, I mean, my it, most people, you know, and know me, and they don't know this about me. This is like a huge secret. <laughs> oh, really? I'm a huge Trekkie, like uh -huh. big time. Right now, we're binge watching um, Deep Space Nine, mm -hmm. but I've seen it. I've cycled through it many times before. Um, but uh, yeah, so when this news came out that scientists had found parallel universes. Um, I was excited. And then I saw like the next day or the day after that, um, that scientists deny that they found uh, <laughs> parallel universes. <laughs> and so I was like, am I sad? And then I thought, no, because actually I was a tarot reader at one time. And that was like looking in parallel universes. And then the poem just came out of that. Mm -hmm. um, well, here, I'll show it on screen if you want to if you want to read it. Yeah, okay. that'd be great. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, you have to you have to uh, show your you read yourself. That won't it won't be on your screen. Oh, it won't be on my no, screen. Yeah. Okay. All right, here goes. Scientists deny finding evidence of parallel universes. I'm one up on the white coats because when I was a psychic friend, every caller wanted my machines that make stories, my cards to discover and delume the now from every other thread to destroy the tapestry. They paid me 10 cents a minute, plus 275 an hour, to sit in a warehouse full of maroon cubicles, to swivel on an ergonomic stool with my X-wing headset and mic, with my quiet food like jello, and tap into parallel universes, with a horseshoe, a full moon, a tree of life spread, as if death didn't mean change after change, as if my nailing their problem and possible outcomes meant knowing exactly what they should do. How do I keep my house? And did she give me this rash? And what should I name my baby? Melinda, Belinda, or Belinda? But the last two are the same, not at all. And you need to get it right, as if I wasn't stupid and 19 and hungry and only playing Taroki Appropriati like they did in old Italia, telling real tales and poems for fun, then leaving the scene and sweating up a sad, steep hill to my one-room reality where I'd unspool my singular universe, lick it, and thread it into the only eye, the only needle I ever got. Yeah, I love that ending. <laughs> I'd unspool it into my singular universe, lick it, and thread it into the only the only eye, the only needle I ever got. Yeah, that's a that's an excellent poem, and I just I love science fiction too. I've always been a, I've been I'm not I'm a Star Trek: The Next Generation Trekkie, but I can never get into any of the other ones. But um, oh, you have to try Voyager at least, if not Deep Space Nine. They're very yeah, good. Yeah, I, I probably should. And then and then Battlestar Galactica. Oh, oh my yes. God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but just the thought of and and I love the I mean. I don't know, just the ideas of parallel, the ideas that, that those kind of um, science fiction just make, it, they stimulate your mind so much, thinking about different ways the universe could work, which is what goes through this poem. Yeah, and what the thing that I love about it, it makes me think of science fiction, it makes me think about what does it mean to be human? Mm -hmm. well, yeah. That's, I like constantly thinking about that, and that's, that's what this... Uh, near discovery uh brought me to <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah well thanks so much for joining us jennifer it's always a real pleasure to see you and everybody should check out that interview from i think it's rattle 53 maybe uh, but it's one of my favorite i love the all the talk about the tarot cards and stuff and then uh, and then there's the important work you do um, um for um sex trafficking victims um so there's just a, it's a great interview it's one of my favorite um, and a great memory too getting to sit in the lobby of awp and do that yeah that was great <laughs> and i hope i can meet you again someday yeah i hope so too hopefully maybe uh, we can get you to come out to the woods for the literary festival sometime yes that. that'd be fantastic if, if, if that's a thing that that we do ever again <laughs> yeah. we but, will we'll do it yeah we will we will we have to have faith okay well thanks so much jennifer it's great to see you you too take have, care yeah, bye-bye bye, -bye. bye. Okay, um, now I'm going to find, see, so last week, um, Charles Harper Webb had asked if he could um, share a poem about Little Richard, and um, let's see, let me try to find, yeah, and I completely forgot to call him, so I'm, I apologize again to Charles Harper Webb, and I'm sorry that you're getting this poem a week late, but let's call up Charles right now. 
Um, nope. Let's see. Well, I got to find them first. Here we go. Yeah, so the phone is ringing, but you can't hear it. Hello, Charles. Hey, how are you doing? Do you see me? Am I here? I don't. I hear you. You're on, your voice is on. I think you got to push the camera button in between the hang up and the mic. Okay. Can, oh, I think you muted yourself. That's the mic. Yeah. Uh, it, there we go. Uh, oh, here you come. I see you. There right you there. are. Okay, cool. So, Charles, how are you doing today? Thanks so much for joining us. And, and sorry again that I forgot to call you uh, last week. You were sitting no. around waiting. And I was like, yeah, I'll call you. And then I... <laughs> But um, yeah, I was just sitting here doing some work anyway. It was it was fun. <laughs> but so you wanted to share this poem, um, and it's an old poem uh, that was already published. But it was about Little Richard who died last week, and um, and I kind of want to let everybody know if you have older poems about news that's uh, going on right now, totally feel free to share it on uh, and Poetry Spun Live. It's, it's we're just looking at current events through poetry. So if there's somehow a coincidence like this where it relates um, to current events, even though it's older, feel free to call up and share those too. Um, so so um, do you want to talk a little bit about, because I know you're a musician. We talked about that um, on Rattlecast number, whatever that was, 38 or something. Um, it, were you um, influenced by Little Richard a lot, would you say? Hugely. Yeah. Hugely. I mean, Little Richard... <laughs> Little Richard was like a god, really, and and the poem talks about that. But it talks about when uh, when I first encountered Little Richard when I was just a little boy, um, and I had a teenage cousin, and uh, it was it it absolutely it. I mean, I, I don't think it would be an exaggeration to say it changed my life. I didn't know anything like that could exist, <laughs> and. Uh, I mean, Little Richard influenced. I think every good rock and roll singer from cer certainly, certainly from his day on, well into the '80s. Anyway, maybe they, maybe still. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, so his, you, you know, his legacy yeah. carries on through the whole chain of of singers. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. true. Um, well, do you want to read? It? I have it on screen sure. for everybody to see. Okay. Um, and the, the title of this poem is the title of one of Little Richard's songs. And it's, ooh, my soul. By night, ghosts roam Aunt Ermine's elm-shrouded hundred-year-old home. By day, my cousin Pete, just out of high school, combs his ducktail and keeps time to records with his creaky rocking chair. I'm in the hall creating all-star teams of baseball cards when, blaring through Pete's open door, I hear, War drums? Or is it a runaway train? Keep a knocking, but you can't come in. Some kind of preacher shrieks, then squeals like tires around a curve. Those chugging drums, smoking piano, squawking duck call saxophones make me feel like an oil rig ready to blow. I see wells pumping, teeter-totters bumping, giant turtle heads working out and in as bronco riders wave tall hats in the air. I see girls twirling, dresses swirling high over their underwear, guys doing splits or inchworming across the floor. It makes me want to slam my head back and forth like a paddle ball to jump, shout, bang, my hands on walls and flap them in the air to fall onto the ground and writhe, flail, roar like Johnny Cerno in his famous Kittyland tantrum. Keep a knocking, but you can't come in, the preacher howls. But I am in. I'm in the living room, bandstand on TV, dad ranting, goddamn Congo beat. I'm in the back seat of his Ford a decade later, learning what that beat could be. I'm in my first. First band, hoarse from screaming, long, tall Sally. 
I'm in my college dorm trying to jam that wild abandon into poems. I'm in my car heading for work when good golly, Miss Molly, catapult out of my blau punk stereo. I'm walking into Pete's bedroom where I've never dared to go. Oh, womp, womp, a loom, womp, a lomp, bam, boom. I'm not thinking in words, but I know I've spent my seven years rehearsing how to feel this way. It's more exciting than a touchdown any day or a home run, a gunfight, hurricane waves at Galveston, a five pound bass on a cane pole. What is that? I holler. Pete says, rock and roll. Let me plug this too. There's a new book on poetry and music called Turn It Up. Uh, and uh, and the poem just came out in that too. I got also got one about Led Zeppelin. Uh, uh, the editor is named Stephen uh, Stephen Kramer, and uh, it let's see who published. Uh, it looks like it comes from Sundog Poetry Center, Green Writers Press. Anyway, if you uh, look at a, look it up on Amazon, you'll find it. It's got all kinds of good stuff in there. And like I say, another band that that totally influenced me was Led Zeppelin, and I got a poem about Led Zeppelin in there too. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming in and sharing yeah. that. Oh, hey, was, my pleasure. Yeah, uh, our, pleasure to hear. Bit. He was a great one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, thanks so much. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Bye. But yeah, and that was uh, once again. I should say that was. Uh, I keep forgetting to unmute my microphone this morning. Like I said, I'm not a morning person, and the coffee has not kicked in. But um, that was uh, that was uh, "Ooh My Soul" by Charles Harper Webb from his uh, book "Amplified Dog," also republished in Shadow Ball, the uh, new and selected. Now. Um, Let's see. I'm trying to see. Yeah, we got a lot of people flowing today. A lot of uh, a lot of people watching. So thanks so much for joining us, and, and good morning to you all. Um, I can't really keep up with the chat on these um, on these um, open mic shows. There's just too much going on. But um, but it's nice to see a whole bunch of people here. Now um, let's go to some more poets. Um, let's see. Who was the first to ask to be on? Uh, Harpreet Kathuria. Yeah, we'll do Harpreet. And when I call you, um, make sure that, um, you realize I'm calling from the future. There's a third minute so delay, so turn off your YouTube window. Harpreet, hey, good to see you. Let me pull you in. Can you, I see you and, um, hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Where are you calling from? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you so much. I'm from India and Wait, uh, Punjab is my home state. Uh-huh. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, and how are things doing where you are given the, the pandemic and, and all that and the hurricane? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, we are in the fourth phase of the lockdown right now mm -hmm. and uh, curbs have been eased to some extent. Uh, as of now, uh, hotspots uh, continue to be challenging, yes. Mm -hmm. um, well, your poem is uh, The Boat of Delight that you wanted to share. Do you want to say a little bit about um, what it's about? Uh, yes, uh, my poem responds to a new story uh, published in the Hindustan Times about uh, a teacher in Bengal who, with the help of his students, uh, identified the poor in and around his vicinity. And uh, every night for over two weeks uh, at the time when the news was reported, he, along with his team, would visit those uh, impoverished households and secretly leave bags of grains and other needed supplements at the doorsteps. So this is my poem about. Yeah, that's wonderful. It's nice to um, have some positive uh, news story that's being written about. Um, so much of the news is um, is not positive. So it's nice to have some some good news too. So thanks for for pulling that out of the what's going on in the world. Um, and go ahead and once you read it, but the boat of delight. Right. Uh, the boat of delight. 
Dawn scatters on the turf, bees glimmer, slivers of April sun and mounts, curl, quench, thirst on citrus flowers newly sprung, eyes awaken behind doors, mud houses come clean with the touch, nimble fingers tap at magic curled in sacks of rice and soaps and masks. Amaji rowed his boat in Kuwai beneath a mesh of stars. All night the river flowed. All night the mystic spoke of light. All night the disciples listened entranced. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. That was um, uh, Harpreet Kathuria uh, reading her poem, The Boat of Delight. Uh, thanks so much for joining us and sharing that, Harpreet. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. My pleasure. Have a good one. Have a good day, you too. Thank you. Um, okay, so so we have a whole bunch of people who would like to join us. Um, I'm going to try to... Um, you know, I'm going to go in the order they were received mostly and then also sort of skipping people to the back of the line if they've been on recent episodes. Um, so let's do Megan Wildhood next. I'm calling up Megan right now. It's ringing. Um, hmm. Each is currently unavailable. Oops. Please leave a message. <laughs> hmm. Well, I tried to call Megan. Let, let's try the next person. I'll, I'll get back to Megan if... Oh, she's calling me back. Okay. Yeah, some people don't have the ringer on, which is what happens. Um, Megan, can you hear me? Hello. Ah, hello. <laughs> nice to see you and hear you. Yeah, I can. Uh, let, me, let me pull you in so everyone else can too. Hello, how are you doing today? <laughs> Oh, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. I, I mean, I just wake up and do this and um, and it shows, <laughs> but <laughs> um, that's, that's amazing. But um, do poetry. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a way to it's a good way to start the day with some poetry. So yeah. let me try to find. Did you submit the poem you want to read to Poets Respond? I did. OK. Uh, on, I believe it was Friday. OK, let me pull it up. Um, let's see. A wild hood. I wrote wild wood. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <it's possible> too. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so what was your what was your poem about? Do you want to explain a little bit what inspired it? Sure. So, I uh, was on the Washington Post's main website and saw um, it was actually kind of a minor article, but it said, um, you know, COVID nineteen does not spread as easily. Um, from surfaces and animals, as originally believed, CDC revised website says. So I went on to the CDC website, and it does indeed say that, but it doesn't say that it was a revision. Mm -hmm. So I found that to be pretty interesting. Like, oh, let's not admit that we made a mistake. Let's just pretend that it was always this way. Um, so that um, got me thinking about um, revisions and how there's all these like narratives that are being repeated but contradicted but continued to be repeated and then there's no acknowledgement that things have changed mm -hmm. um and just this larger idea of like we in this culture kind of shame people for changing their minds mm -hmm. when in reality we should be celebrating that because it means we've learned and um we're more open yeah so, definitely i completely agree with that it's a real problem we have <laughs> um and then i wanted to i don't i struggle with writing form poetry but um on one of these I think it was last week's um, live. You'd said Rattle really likes form poetry, but you don't get a lot mm -hmm. of it. So I was like, well, I have a favorite form and I'm going to try to use that. So that's. <laughs> and and what, is, what is the form? Yeah, it's a pantoum. A pantoum. Okay. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it, it did stand out. And the form helped it stand out. This is one of the ones that I was considering too, actually. Um, cause I, cause I do, I love form. And, um, so anytime we get in my ears or my eyes perk up a little bit when I notice something repeating or rhyming, cause, um, and there's a whole, um, 
cadre of people who who um, sort of demand more rhyme with pitchforks and, <laughs> and more form. And they say, you know, where why are all these poems just prose with line breaks? Is this is the constant refrain in my head? So um, it's nice to be able to publish some that aren't. And um, yeah. and um, but yeah, it's such an important topic. I, my my faith in the CDC has really. Um, you know, just and, and all officials has has really dropped, and I didn't have much to start with, but I thought at least, you know, yeah, look, yeah, exactly, exactly. The whole like don't wear a mask thing, like oh god, <laughs> and, right, but, like, don't wear a mask, then do wear a mask, mm-hmm. and then there's no acknowledgement Ex- that that was. It was just like, oh, I've always said this. Exactly. Like, it's it's like, there's like no... And then the other thing about it is that it seems like it stems from having no faith in the American public or something. Or, oh, yeah. Or, you know, like, we can't tell you the truth. We have to, like, treat you like my five-year-old kid. But then what happens is that we act like five-year-old kids, too. So maybe they're right is, is part of the thing I keep thinking. Um, I think it's when you act, when you... I've noticed this, too. And I, I do this. If somebody acts like I'm like they assume I'm trustworthy and they just, you know, like my supervisor, here's a huge project. You know, if you have questions, come to me. But otherwise, I trust you. Then I act trustworthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so, too. I think if we said. Sorry, oh, it's OK. <laughs> someone tries to coddle me or hold my hand, then I'm like, oh, all right. Well, I guess I'll act like you're treating me because you've already made up your mind about that. Mm-hmm. So I think it's that's kind of what we're seeing with the people who there's like the infighting about the masks and the social distancing. And I think it's because we, as a society, our officials are not treating us as if we're adults Mm -hmm. or trust at all. So surprise, surprise. Yeah. As a general public, that's not how we're acting. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think you hit it on the head right there. Um, So here it is. Speaking of hitting thing, bullseye, um, opinion is the new bullseye. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Opinion is the new bullseye. The CDC revised their website today. COVID does not spread easily from surfaces or animals. They did not indicate this was a revision. It was always this way. Two months ago, Dr. Fauci ridiculed mask wearing. COVID does not spread easily from surfaces or animals. Last week, Dr. Fauci urged everyone to wear a face covering. Two months ago, Dr. Fauci ridiculed mask wearing. There was no acknowledgement of this about face. Last week, Dr. Fauci urged everyone to wear a face covering. Officials pumped their chapped fists, chanting, reopen, reopen. There was no acknowledgement of this about face. Officials wring their hands, begging everyone to stay home. Officials pumped their chapped fists, chanting, Reopen, reopen. The CDC revised their website today. Officials wring their hands, begging everyone to stay home. They did not indicate this was a revision. It was always this way. Actually, that was Megan Wildhood reading Opinion is the New Bullseye. Thanks so much for joining and sharing that, Megan. For having me. Yeah, my pleasure. Have a good rest of your weekend. You too. Bye. Bye. Okay, um, let's see. <clears throat> Who will be next? Um, let's see. Oh, we have to try um, Pranab Gosh. We we keep trying to um, connect with him, and the, it doesn't connect. The last like three or four episodes, I think. So let's give him one shot this week too. Well, I'm getting the. Hmm. I'm getting that beep. I wonder. See, I think you can hear it if I. Yeah, I just get this busy tone. Yeah, it's still not working, unfortunately, uh, for Pranab. Sorry, Pranab. I really wish we could get you on. Um, he's been here the last three or four weeks, like I said. Um, let's see. Going down to the bottom of the list. Um, let's see, let's do, um, we have a Katie, Katie Entner.
Hey, Katie, let me pull you in. I Can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? I can. Um, let's see. Here you go. I don't have video, though. If you, if you don't want to, that's fine. But if you do, click the video button so we can mm -hmm. see you. Um, so your poem, let's see, that you wanted to share. Which one was it? There's two here from May. It's the, the one from this past week called... In this news clip, I know all the street names. Gotcha. And and do you want to explain a little bit about uh, what it's about? Yeah. Um, sorry, my video is not pulling up right now. Oh, it's all right. But this poem was about, um, so I was raised in Midland, Michigan, and they just had a, a really big flood this past week. Two of the dams upriver from the city broke, and they were... Um, there were about 10,000 people who had to be evacuated from their homes. And so it was, this poem is responding to that, but also to the, the strange feeling of, of recognizing the things in a, in a news story oh, that yeah. are happening. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, and yeah, how, how are things now? There are no, no um, casualties or fatalities I, I see in your note. Um, are mm -hmm. things... Um, are they able to repair it or, or is the, is the threat over? Do you know? I am not really sure. I know that the water had started receding in some places, but two of the two lakes had drained mm -hmm. into, um, down river and, and into the city. And so a lot of downtown area and then a couple other smaller towns along the river had been really heavily damaged. So I'm not sure how, mm -hmm how the construction or reconstruction is going so far. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for, for uh, sharing this poem. It's in this news clip. I know all the street names. Go ahead and read it whenever you're ready. All right. I've seen flooding in newscasts much like this before. They're more or less painted the same color palette, the rush of thick water that covers the roadways in some shade of Brown that you don't want to name. Dingy, it laps at the bottom of street signs, beside a car roof sticking out of the soup. I've seen this before, how disaster defaces, but in Midland, I know all these places. A reporter is standing at Ashman and Maine, and she keeps looking down at her feet. Are they damp? While behind her, the roof of the farmer's market hovers barely above the aquatic expanse. I've watched this before. It was almost the same, but this time I know that street's name. The most common aerial photo is taken a hundred or so yards southwest, overlooking the copper green ring of the roof of the market, the parking and park outlined sparsely by trees, and the spidery legs of the tridge, which is crouched where the Titabawasi and Chippewa meet. They have met, they have mingled, they've mixed up a drink of neglect and destruction, of sewage and stink. I've seen this before after hurricanes, but here in Midland, I know all the street names. On St. Andrews, librarians worked through the night to evacuate newspaper archives and kids' books. On Thursday, the National Guard helps to carry the volumes upstairs where they won't breathe the water. The collection fares better than in 17 when only the books that were checked out were spared from the slow death of mildewy air. Even the city has seen this before, but the dams made it worse than in famed 86 and let's throw a pandemic right into the mix. Your response, are you chargers and chemix? Some kayakers paddle down sturgeon in search of some pets or belongings or just to see home. They are bright fish in canals of dull waters where Sturgeon Creek mingles with Sanford and Wixom. The news helicopter zooms in on an owner whose landscaping dots with green buoys, a pier where he pushes ashore and squints at the camera and wades to his door, disappears. I've watched this before, somewhere else far away, but I know all the street names today. Thanks so much. That was uh, in this news clip, I Know All the Street Names by Katie Entner. Um, and Katie, where are you calling from? I forgot to ask, but it looks like you're overseas, maybe, based on your address. Yeah, yeah, I'm calling from France. Yeah, that's what I thought. It doesn't say the country on the submittable 
yeah. um, link. But yeah, yeah. So that that's adds a whole new sort of layer to it to have to see mm -hmm. from so far away those familiar right. streets. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, kind of a feeling of helplessness, I bet. Um, yeah. Yeah. And description. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for sharing that. Um, excellent yeah, poem, Katie. And I, I love the, the rhyme in there, too. Thanks. Yeah, have a, have a good day. You too. Bye. Bye. Okay, let's see. Um, next in line is uh, Neil Lemery. I think he might have been on one time a couple weeks ago or months ago. Maybe not, though. Hi, Kim. Hey, Neil. Um, let me, uh, let's see, I don't have any video yet, but uh, I have your audio. Um, if you want to push the camera button, then we could see okay. it too. Do camera button. Yeah, it would be between the, um, there you, here you come. Okay, good to see you, Neil. Okay. Yeah. Good. And where are you calling from? I know you called in one time oh. before, I think, but I can't yeah, remember. Yeah. Tillamook, Oregon? Tillamook, Oregon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we love Tillamook cheese. <laughs> Let's see. And what, what poem did you want to read today? Uh, I'm going to read the um, Rejecting the Apocalypse. Ah, oh, that's right. Okay. Is there anything you want to say about it before we start? Um, yeah, we've, I've just been mulling over things in quarantine and... Um, having a hard time writing because it just comes in fragments and things don't come together. Um, so yeah, this has been, I've been working on it for a couple of weeks off and on. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's hear it. This is uh, rejecting the apocalyptic. Oh, apocalyptic. Okay. Right. Rejecting the apocalyptic from my quarantine fog. The, this great awakening calls me to step forward, stirring me into action from world crisis Limbo, isolation. I hear a calling to respond. Emerging from confusion and certainty, I crave knowledge, understanding, a looking to science, yet often distracted, ambushed by half-baked, half-truth conspiracies. Apocalyptic panic, manic rejection of reason, logic, experience, Years of observing, hypothesizing, testing, refining. Let's now be hysterical. History repeating, we fail as students, somehow needing to learn old lessons again. Straying from proven tools, critical thinking. The fearful, rigid thinkers of cookie cutter answers moving sideways. Clutching the nearest pretty falsehood, the patent medicines, shoving aside the inconvenient truths, the proven methodologies, the tried and true. In such a world, it was all too easy for extremism and fundamentalism to take root and grow. And from fundamentalism, it was but a short step over the line to madness. I move ahead, turning away from the panicked, the irrationality, to the wise observing, assessing, evaluating, those answering the call to reasoned analysis. I move to join with that community, those experiencing, learning, evaluating, the age-old ways of moving ahead, making sense, bringing order from chaos and fear, voices of reason and truth. Thanks so much. That was Neil Lemery reading his poem, Rejecting the Apocalyptic. Uh, thanks for, for joining and sharing that, Neil. It's a good poem. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Okay, let's see. So I just saw a message from uh, Richard Westheimer. Um, he said that the... Let's see. Facebook's not working. There it says YouTube's not working, but that's strange because... Um, and I was wondering, we didn't have all that many people watching... But it says it's working for me. Hmm. I don't know. It must be some YouTube glitch. But maybe I can um, I can upload the the video later, so you can have the full video. This was a this been a very good episode. So I wouldn't. I'd hate to have ever, anybody miss it. Um, but we are over live on Facebook. 
Let's see, Facebook is fine. Yeah, Facebook's fine, but YouTube's not working. And um, yeah, Periscope's working too. Hmm. Let's see, Poach Fun Live. Yeah, I, I will have to see what happens later. But uh, thanks for letting me know. I wish I'd seen that earlier so I could have uh, maybe done something to fix it. But um, but thanks, Richard, for letting me know. Um, now let's see. It's uh, it's it's ten o'clock, and the next person on the list. Let's do um, let's do Vidya Venkat. She wanted to do a, share a poem about um. I have to find it again. Hmm. Let's see. Also, Matthew King says it's working now, but the YouTube didn't work for the first 20 minutes. Hmm. Well, that's strange. I have no idea why that would be. Hopefully, that doesn't that that isn't a gremlin that keeps popping up in the future. Um, anyway, let's call Vidya Venkat. She's going to share a poem um, about the um, the the typhoon. That came through. Hello, Vidya. How you doing today? Let me pull you in so everybody can see. It. Hi. I have audio. Hi. Oh, there you go. Hello. How you doing today? Yes. Hi. I'm good. Uh, uh, um, as you know, the poem that I have sent is not the poem that I submitted. It's another poem mm -hmm. uh, called "After the Storm." Yeah. There's nothing wrong uh, with that. Yeah. And, uh, Yes, and uh, I've also given the link to my site because there's that picture in in that of this hut that's washed away completely in the storm. So, as you know, there was a, a, a cyclone, the cyclone Amphan, uh, that is uh, touted as the worst cyclonic storm uh, in several decades to uh, hit the Bay of Bengal. And uh, it has, it's really devastated uh, Bengal and Bangladesh right now. And Sundarbans is the delta region, uh, you know, the confluence of three rivers on the, the Ganges, the Padma. Uh, it's basically um, on the Bay of Bengal and it's a very sensitive, eco-sensitive zone. Uh, and it has mangrove forests and so on. And I've also been there once. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, bore the brunt of the cyclonic storm so mm -hmm. this poem is actually an ekphrastic poem uh, you know it was inspired by the photo of a man that i saw uh, on social media of this man who was sitting and sobbing after the uh, cyclone uh, so i wanted to read this out okay thank you yeah everybody can see the the photo and um in the poem so go ahead whenever you're ready yeah yeah after the storm, he sits on his haunches, palm over the head. The storm last night blew away his hut. It, it was made out of straw and some thatch. It was no match for the might of the raging monster. In Sundarbans, people become meals for crocodiles and tigers. I remember the ordeal of that woman in Gosaba, whose teenage son went fishing one morning in the brackish water when a sly mugger dragged him to death. Like the ebb and flow of the sea, life and death varies on this tiny island. But what do you do when the storm pummels you and leaves and you still have to be? Thanks much. That was Vidya Venkat uh, reading After the Storm. Um, and but uh, how are you doing? Are you safe where you are? Is, is, is there, was there any damage from the typhoon there? Um, no, I'm in Chennai, mm -hmm. uh, but I have friends and family who live in Kolkata. Mm -hmm. So from them, I was constantly getting news of what was happening there, mm -hmm. and it was really very scary. Like uh, the entire city, even Calcutta, is completely uh, damaged because of the storm. Mm -hmm. So I have friends there. I have plenty of. I grew up in Calcutta, so mm -hmm. uh, I have plenty of friends there, and I'm constantly getting like messages from them. So I've been really worried the past week, you know, oh, uh, yeah. praying for their life and safety. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, I hope yeah. hope um, they all stay safe and um, and and remain so. Yeah. 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 Well, thanks. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah. Thanks so much for sharing that. Thank you. Okay, um, let's see. Um, let's 
Let's see. Um, let's do one more. I'm trying to do somebody who we've never uh, done before. Um, let's see. Okay, here's a meat. I should. Um, Amit Shankar Saha. I'll give him a call. Amit, hey, this is Tim with Rattle, and you are live. Yeah. Hello, let me pull you in. Uh, so, hello. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, good, good morning. How are you doing? Where are you calling from? Yeah, I'm calling from Kolkata, and I'm, I was at the eye of the cyclone oh wow Just now Vidya <laughs> so so Calcutta was uh, but this poem which I had sent was about the migrant condition during the lockdown uh, well before I'm um, just like, how how are um things like in your immediate vicinity are you um are yeah, you, was the, north of Kolkata which is uh, more or less safe uh -huh. so we have City internet connection, whereas the south of Kolkata had to bear the major brunt. Mm -hmm. There was no electricity, no water, no. And the uh, south of Bengal during the Sundarban areas, uh, those were the greatly affected. Those are the greatly affected areas. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, I'm glad it's. I'm glad you're safe where you are, and you can you can join us, and the internet's still working, and all that. Um. So so your poem was about um about migrant workers. Is there anything you want to say about it before you read? Oh. Is there anything you want to say about the poem before you read it? Yeah, the poem is about this, uh, like we are going through the corona crisis and we are in a lockdown phase. And there is a constant news coming in about tragedies, about migrants who have uh, been quarantined, who are wanting to go to their native places, but they are not able to, they are walking for distances because there is no other vehicle. And instead of uh, like, uh, they are not dying out of uh, this infection, but they are dying on the way, either through accidents on the railway tracks or on the road or just out of malnutrition mm -hmm. because they are not getting any food. So this sudden lockdown has put them in a great peril. And this constant news that is coming in, it's not just one news daily news that the migrant situation just like the corona situation is there the migrant situation is there and i mean it's also it's a constant stream of bad mm -hmm. news it almost makes one's immune like uh, okay this this is just uh, normalizing a tragedy yeah yeah so i definitely i was when i wrote this poem immune okay go ahead and read it read yep it? go ahead immune there is so much of grief in this world that I am unaffected by it. seeking my own personal grief, swooping down into the well of memories to fetch those shadows is not is too easy. Nostalgia has been kind to me. But what about those sorrows whose sorrows those sorrows, those whose sorrows do not diminish me, whose sadness does not take the light out of my world. What about that migrant child's death, the news of which does not reach me? So much of unaffected prose enters my poetry that I sometimes wonder whether I have ceased to be a poet. Thank you. That was Amit Shankar Saha reading uh, Immunity. Um, yeah, thanks so much for calling in and sharing that, Amit. Yeah, yeah, stay safe and have a good rest of your day. Yeah, bye. bye. Okay. Well, that is going to be all for the show today. Thanks so much for joining us. If you missed a, a segment of the show, um, because apparently it wasn't streaming to YouTube, I will try to replace that. Um, you know, it's uh, I can I can download the files uh, from Facebook or something and then put it back to um, YouTube. 
and uh, hopefully people will be able to watch and, and you'll have no idea what I'm even talking about if you look at this in the archive. But um, but an excellent uh, excellent show, just so many great poems and um, from all over the world, and that's really the joy of this uh, every weekend for me is to get to see so many slices of um, our human reality from um, so many different perspectives. And I'm gl really glad we could share that with you. Um, so thanks so much for joining us, and um, I hope you do next week. This is going to be a, this is a weekly Sunday morning show. Now next week uh, on the Rattlecast this coming this coming week I should say. Uh, John Philip Johnson is going to be the guest. Uh, he's the author of Book of Fly and uh, so, um, Stairs Appear in a Hole Outside of Town. Those are two graphic poetry books um, done with um, really well-known comic book artists um, who do you know who, who work with Marvel and all that stuff. And uh, these are really excellent poems, but then they become comic books, which is a really cool thing, which he kickstarts. Uh, so he uses... Um, um, you know, that fundraising tool to produce these books. Uh, so there's a lot to talk about. He's a, he's a poet. Um, he's a great poet, but he's sort of a poet that um, has chosen a different path than the, than the usual um, way of publishing. And so it'll be interesting to talk about that and interested in, in interesting to share uh, these poems from this book with, uh, with images too. So um, look forward to that. That's Tuesday, May 26th at 9 PM Eastern time. And uh, there is, a um, prompt, as always, which is you have to write a poem, and I can't pull it up in time, but you have to write a poem um, that starts with a question and ends with a different question. That's the prompt for this Tuesday. So if you uh, do that, you can send it to openmic at rattle.com and, um, and join in live in the open mic, just like we do here today, except it's for prompt poems instead of news poems. And that's Tuesday night. So hope to see you then, and hopefully the YouTube uh, problem will be figured out. Uh, by then. Now, um, that's all for tonight or for this morning. Hope you have a good rest of your weekend and I will see you soon.